good internal communications in the crisis, the companies need to rationalize why communication roles are important in ensuring inf information effectively communicated to the uh, employees. Don't assume that someone else in the company is taking that role of communicating, making it official, um, you know, who does what and in what situation and when. Hello everyone, we are really excited and nervous to be here today. First and foremost, to the Walk Pro podcast series. We are team six from the MBA for Walking Professional Classes of 2021. My name is Tara and I'm from Air Asia. And we also have here Arena from Sakura Energy and Victor from Quan Family Association. Arena and Victor, could you say hello to our audience? Hello, hi everyone. Hi. Okay, so you guys are here to work your COVID-19 problems with the MBA for working professional students. Our episode title today is Communicate, 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 Recommendations on how to develop internal communication strategies for the companies. Now over to you, Arina. Uh, thanks for the introduction there, Pura. Um, okay, so today's episode covers some ways on how we think companies can address some of the worries of uh, employees during COVID-19. We are definitely not experts on communication strategies, but you know, based on our experiences and worries as employees, I think we can come up with some recommendation, right guys? Yes. Uh, what, what, what do you think, Victor? Definitely, Arena. Uh, let me just start with, uh, did you guys remember the presentation we did during the symposium last year, the story of 20%? Yes, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And also, did you guys remember the five stages of grief we discussed? Denial, angry, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Don't you think that uh, we all went through the same thing when the COVID-19 started? Uh, how about you, Pura? Did you go through this as an employee? I mean, I'm pretty sure we went through all these five stages personally. But as an employee, uh, how did you go through this? Yeah, yes, Victor, I have experienced all of five stages after the pandemic has started. I especially remember the period that some countries started to close their border. At the time, I denied this crisis and said to myself, okay, this is just a temporary problem. It doesn't make any sense that all countries close their border. Maybe the flight wouldn't stop operating. But actually, it happened really very soon. So that was my first denier stage of the grief. What about you, Victor? Did you also experience these five stages? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, so after the denial stage, I became angry for sure. Uh, I remember a time when I just didn't get why it was so hard for some of senior members of the company, uh, how they couldn't do simple things like install and turn on some apps. You know? So at that time, I wasn't thinking rationally because I was in angry stage. So please no judgment here. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we all uh, also went through this stage of bargaining, bargaining with myself, bargaining to trying to make a deal with God. So at one point, I was like a kid who are talking to Santa, uh, wishing he can get his Christmas gift for being a good kid in future. You know, like Santa, please. <laughs> I know I was a good kid in this year, but I will promise I'll do much better in next year. <laughs> so uh, how about you, Arena? Uh, yes, so I think even right now, sometimes I go through this whole cycle once in a while, you know, but the, the depression stage was the one that stood up for me the most. Um, this was really difficult because working from home, sometimes it tends to do this to people, right? Uh, de depression. Um, I was working at the same time, we had classes and deliverables and I think, oh man, the hardest part was actually, throughout the whole thing, was actually doing homeschooling for my kids. Mm -hmm. um, I really found out something, I'm not made to be a teacher, so, you know, <laughs> big two thumbs up to all the lecturers, professors and teachers that's listening to this podcast right now. Um, yeah, so, so and then eventually after the depression mode, I went into the acceptance mode. And I think most of us as employees, we are here right now um, 
at the acceptance mode where we adapt, you know. Um, so yeah, so, so that's the whole the five stages of grief. So I think after looking at this whole cycle of feelings, we are, we are here today to propose some steps on how to deal with this. So these three steps are rationalize, how to create awareness and, and how to engage. Um, Pierre, do you want to bring us through this in the framework and see how we touch some of these in our respective companies? Sure, thanks, Arena. Okay, so from here, we would like to introduce our company story, how we've been gone through these three steps, rationalization, awareness, and engagement. Uh, let me start with the story of Air Asia, how it rationalized the internal communication strategy during the pandemic. Some of you might also have experienced same experience as me, as COVID-19 spread rapidly all over the world, airline industry got seriously affected to the business. And we had a lot of negative rumors every day, even the press reports about the company's future. So I was also very depressed due to this uncertainty. And, you know, I'm even sponsored by Air Asia for this MBA program. So yeah. my anxiety was like very higher than anyone else, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. However, I think Air Asia successfully uh, and promptly executed the new internal uh, communication strategy by reassigning uh, the communicating roles and supporting the employees emotionally and professionally. Uh, let me give you one example. So we have this group CEO who is Tony Fernandez. He took this role to stand in for strong emotional support for the employees. And then other management took the role delivering accurate in, uh, internal updates to prevent any negative assumptions. And we also had a working lab employees who took their roles to develop empathy to each other and to share their work from home tips. And I think it worked pretty well. So this is all. So Arina, could you now tell us your company story, how Sapura went through this awareness stage? Yeah, sure, sure, Priyara, thanks. So this was also an important stage after we rationalized why we needed to um, have a good communication strategy, right? So now it was a matter of uh, creating awareness. How do we create awareness for employees in Sapura for them to know that the company was taking steps to ensure their well-being? So this would really help in addressing employees that were depressed, you know, if we were to link it back to the five stages of grief. Uh, we had a lot of questions coming in from employees um, at the beginning when the MCO started around what were the SOPs uh, and working from home arrangements. We also had, you know, emails from employees expressing that they were emotionally disturbed by all that was happening. And that was really sad. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, so what Sakura did was they first... Uh, they created surveys to get a feel on what the actual worries were. Uh, we had virtual town halls and some support groups as well. Um, and we also had to quickly create awareness of what the main communication platform was. So for Sapura, this was uh, Microsoft Teams and people had to quickly adapt to this. Um, Victor, what about the Quan Family Association? Um, like, uh, what did you guys do in making sure engagement was done right? And what was some of the communication channels or roles did your company do? Uh, thanks, Irina. So as a family association, it's important to build bondings and assure engagement from all members. Uh, however, there was communication gap between age groups, between mm -hmm. senior members and young members. Um, we all knew that there was a gap, but the attempt to reduce them was not happening often because people in graduation was quite adapted to this situation and thinking it is just a natural thing. You know? So communication gap, age gap, you know, it's all over the society, not just in our organization. You know? yeah. 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 So, but however, when pandemic situation came up, this issue hit directly the organization because we found difficulty to bring works and communications to online platform especially yeah. in case of senior members. And at the same time, there was no contingency plan or protocol that we can follow. So everyone did not know uh, what to do and how to do it. So there was big confusion at the beginning. 
Uh, however, we accept the fact that we have no choice but to make a movement to go forward to protect the members and our business. So we organized small groups containing various age differences and led younger members to help senior members get used to new online and mobile platform. Um, also, executives had been great role models to members by showing how eagerly they learned the new things and supporting or encouraging all members, not only the senior members, to adapt new skills as responses to this pandemic. I think that's a really great story, Victor. Thank you for sharing because I think it's really inspiring how the employees uh, support each other during this pandemic. Yeah. So, yeah. So now we jump to, into the sharp and smart skills. Before we discuss what these skills the company need to acquire and develop, let's start with the definition of smart and sharp skills. So, Victor, could you explain what the sharp skills are? Sure, sure. So sharp skills are the technical capabilities for responding to the situations and challenges. Uh, for example, we need statistical thinkings and data analytics to align our thoughts with the fundamental ideas of statistics. Uh, there are also other sharp skills like risk assessment, system dynamics, digital literacy, and so on. So, all right, so I think I can continue with the smart skills. Um, basically, they are the skills required to successfully nav navigate through life, basically. In other words, they are the ways um, how we respond to the situations and challenges with intelligence and diplomacy. Uh, they include creative and critical thinking, emotional maturity, uh, empathy, cognitive readiness, adaptability, self-awareness, collaboration, and so on. Um, so maybe now we should start to discuss what sharp and smart skills we use in our respective companies for internal communication strategy during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Sure, Arena. Let me uh, start with our AirAsia case first. So there are many other uh, skills developed by AirAsia and other uh, uh, companies, but I would like to introduce a sharp skill, which is uh, digital literacy and a smart skill uh, adaptability today. As I said, many of Air Asia employees were feeling uncertainty with our COVID-19 situation, of course, including me. And you know, we started to work from home and some employees, including pilots and cabin crews could not continue their works as the borders were closed. So in this situation, the Air Asia tried to make all employees to be digitally literate as it frequently used online community and video conferencing. So I personally like a corporate community platform like uh, Workplace because I feel it reduced I feel it reduced the psychological barrier of us I mean employees to speak up because we can easily express our thoughts by just one click such as like hate or angry. But of course, it's only meaningful when the company can respect the freedom of expression of the yeah, employees. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. That's great. And in addition, Air Asia also built an online academy, which is called as Red Beat Academy, where the employees can upskill themselves with digital technologies as software engineer, data analyst, UI UX designer, and others. On. So it has been built in the partnership with Google Cloud. So this effort of Air Asia did not just stop at using new tech uh, communicate communicating tech, but also, also move forward to reskill the talents as digital experts. So finally, eight of employees already got a new position as digital expert in Asia. Great, that's great. Thank you. I think that's a that's really amazing, cool. yeah, very progressive movement in the yeah. new era. And if there is any chance, I would love to take the digital analyst program. Um, as well, of course, after my MBA graduation. So yeah, pretty, it's so cool, Kira. Yeah, yeah. I hope I can take this chance. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you should, you should. Yeah. So in conclusion, with these all changes, I think Air Asia and its employees show their flexibility and adaptability with this open mind during the pandemic. So Arina, could you now introduce how Sapura 
energy, develop the sharp and smart skills for internal communication strategy? Yeah, uh, thanks for that. You're a great example there and, you know, illustration on how Air Asia used the smart and sharp skills. Um, so like you mentioned, you know, we typically use smart and sharp skills every day. But um, I like to call it two of the smart and sharp skills that were used in Sephora. So basically, like I mentioned, we engaged in surveys, right, during uh, the creating awareness stage. So the results from the surveys, we use the sharp skills um, to identify what the statistics in those answers were. So we use, um, basically we use statistical thinking and data analytics to actually identify what were employees' actual worries were. Um, you know, so we looked at the patterns in the data survey results. However, we have to take the survey results also with a pinch of salt. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, surveys are a one-way communication platform and there's no human interaction. Um, and sometimes the answers from the surveys could be skewed and biased, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so what Sephora did was also to use the smart skill of listening. So basically, on top of the surveys, we use another data point to actually address the worries, which was by way of focus town halls. Um, management was able to listen to what the employees were actual worries were and you know they got to see the emotional expression body language the sound of their voice through active listening skills and I think I like to call out the act of active listening versus passive listening you know more often than not we do a lot of passive listening where you know we are actually engaged in a conversation but we're not really listening yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure. yeah, so this is really important, especially in times of crisis like the pandemic. Uh, so, so yeah, that was how Sephora did it in the engagement stage. Victor, what about you? What was, you know, the smart and sharp skills that your company used? So thank you, Pura and Arena, for sharing your such inspirational experiences. Uh, it reminds me that regardless of size and form of the organization, Smart and sharp skills are applicable to enhance internal communication and draw more engagement. In my case, as mentioned earlier, we organize small groups internally and let younger members help senior members or members who are not familiar with online mobile platform. I would like to call it a system dynamics approach since we made that decision based on our organizational characteristics. As a family association, it is important to bring members active participation for the association. So we asked our young members to help senior members training. Over the past years, young members had complained that they felt they did not have chance to take part in and take a responsible role in the organization. And this was causing low attention to association from that age group. But after we brought them in the small groups and gave them important role. Now they felt more responsibility and sense of ownership toward the association. Um, also, I was glad when I found that most group members show respect to each other and accept this new situation in harmony. Usually senior members were always try to teach something to younger members. And it was not often that they got lessons from the younger generation. True, agree. Yeah, yeah. And however, uh, they had done it nicely, very, very maturely. So honestly, at the beginning stage, I was worried because I assumed that they might disturb them like a fool and don't want to make any changes. But now I know it was worry for nothing and I'm proud of them. I'm proud of them and my organization. Uh, at the same time, I must say that this smooth process worked well because the executives displayed role models and supported other senior members mentally to help them to adapt this, to this new situation. They persuaded senior members that these new changes were necessary to protect them and the organization and promised all support to help them to learn and get used to the new skills and platforms. Um, because of family association's unique characteristics, which is high hierarchy system. When executives present support like that, many members willing 
willingly to uh, follow the leaders. Um, on the other hand, I also realized that each person's learning curve is different. So even after yeah. the months yeah. of practice, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm. So even after the months of practice, subsidiary members still found problems such as making digital signature and send files with different sizes, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So I needed to keep remind this when I asked something to the other members and checked they are already familiar with it or they need some guidance because I should not assume that the other knows what I know how to do it. So yeah, yeah this is my story. Hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Victor. I think that's really an uh, important point that we have to understand a uh, different pace of understanding of each other. Uh, so, okay, then, shall we sum up today's discussion? What will be do's and don'ts we recommend based on our, recommend, uh, our experience? Uh, let me start first. So I suggest to follow our acceptance stage, which were rationalization, awareness, and engagement. For good internal communications in the crisis, the companies need to rationalize why communication roles are important in ensuring inf information effectively communicated to the uh, employees. They are also required to provide support and be aware of emotional needs of employees during the pandemic. And then they have to engage in survey, open two-way communications, focus groups, and trainings as well. And Irina and Victor, do you have any points to add on? Uh, yes, thanks, Vera. Uh, I think I'll take this one. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the don'ts, right? First one is don't assume that someone else in the company is taking that role of communicating. Mm -hmm. I think Air Asia did it really well in terms of making it official, um, you know, who does what and in what situation and when. So, you know, that that's de that's definitely a no-no that, you know, yeah, you true, should true. To, to not assume and second one is don't make it difficult for employees to approach you in communicating their needs. I know everyone is super busy, especially in times like the pandemic and there's so much work to do. However, you know, it's, it's important that if it comes up to you to actually say that they need to talk, uh, make time for them. Uh, so, you know, how Sakura did it with the support groups in terms of communication channel was, I think, pretty good um, for me at least. So, and, and lastly, don't just depend on one point of data in terms of thinking of an action plan. So you need to have multiple data points in order to move forward and come up with a plan that's actually sustainable. So that's, that's, that's all for me. Um, Thanks, Victor, do you want to add anything? Yeah, uh, so I think I can, some, I can add some considerations that we should have when using smart and sharp skills. First, uh, we should admit that nobody wanted this situation and never imagined this kind of situation actually come to us. It's, yeah. uh, it's like a zombie movie. Uh, we watch it, we enjoy it, but we never think it can be real. But yeah. we already live in the world that never imagined. And it's already over a year. Uh, most people and uh, organizations don't have plans for this. Uh, here, uh, the sharp skills can help identify what we need to do uh, to respond to this crisis and building action plans for the future. At the same time, both sharp and smart skills can be used uh, to concurrently to address the needs of the employees. It is important to know what employees think, how they feel, and what they need because it is the people who work on it and make things happen. Uh, to keep the productivity and creativity level of employees, it is necessary to take care of their worries and feelings in this first ever reality. Uh, smart skills work strongly to motivate employees' participation and engagement in managing mental distance and personal feelings. On the other hand, Sharp skills are useful for in introduction and adaptation for the new platform, but the pace of acceptance can be different by person. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so before we end our podcast, I would like to pick up some key takeaways from our podcast. Uh, first and foremost, 
internal communication is critical to digital digital transformation of companies and change management because it is at the core of reaching and connecting with employees. Second, internal communication starts from the effort of listening and understanding what the employees truly want. I cannot put more focus on this one because at the end of the day, it is the people who make things work. So, well, unless you change all employees with the AIs. <laughs> <laughs> True. So identify what they need and how they feel and support their transition. Uh, next, companies should remain agile and do not stop learning and evolving as we are living in the era of uncertainty. With the current unrealistic reality, we need to keep asking ourselves, what next? What can be happen in next scenario? And what do we do? What do we need to do to respond? To and take a quick action for it. Uh, last but least, management will need to play an active role in engaging employees. It is the key of the all plans and the actions. Uh, nobody loves the backseat drivers. So when management or executives display themselves as a role model, when they jump in as the first line of the change, then other employees will follow the steps too. Yeah, thank you very much, Victor, for the key takeaways. I think that was really nice summary of this podcast today. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay, so this is all we prepared today. So I hope you had some inspiring and fruitful time with us. Thank you, Arina and Victor, for sharing your thoughts and experience. Oh, you're welcome, Piara. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us today. And thank you, everyone, for participating in our podcast. We look forward to meeting you in our new episode again. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Take care.